When I first went to the Bulaway Christian Center, I was impressed by everything I saw. One of the first things that really impacted my life was the praise and worship. We had a, a lovely, young, pumping youth group. People are just full of life, literally full of life, praising the Lord. There was a liberty in the spirit. The leadership was driven. They were organized. We had a newspaper that we were running. Uh, a children's church um, video department we started. All the ashes had special uniforms and we had nice uh, churches well laid out. Very successful. It made an impact in the city. There was a different preacher coming from outside the country. We got every big name from every big church from South Africa, America, wherever anybody was floating through. Everybody knew of the Bulaway Christian Center. The speakers would come in that gather the crowds. A lot of things were happening. We had healings, we had miracles, we had the gifts of the Spirit in operation. Everything would look good on the outside, but once you got in for a while, you became conscious of the lack within the Spirit in the church. I was looking for somebody who was maybe a father image, who could come and guide us in this, this whole dynamic of what we called relationships. I met Richard in a conference in Durban, South Africa. We went and had coffee together and he was interested in me. As a result of that, I invited him to come up to the church. That's when I started to see the inside of the church, what was really happening there. We related to each other professionally. Even though we were friends, there were certain lines we didn't cross. Each man was pursuing and within his ministry his own goal, his own dream, his own aspirations. We just pulled that together and called that a church. There was no unity. There were five of them, five pastors and elders, each one doing his own thing. I didn't know anyone. I didn't know who their wives were. I didn't know who their families were. Division. There was no relationship. Some people in the church supported Basil. Some people would draw close to me. I used to witness a lot of quarrelings among the pastors and a lot of hard talk. There was a time when there was so much conflict that they actually asked me to come in and arbitrate. They could not sit down together and eat together. And they were in the same church. The divisions within our leadership had grown to a point where we were now facing some serious church splits. With Basil in his youth ministry and, and Richard, you know, running the church and, and, and Neil with the Bible school, there were very clear demarcations. The youth became uh, a church within the church. There was a separation between the cultures and the colors of, of people in the church. Same church, one meeting for the black and one meeting for the white. Not only between the blacks and the whites, but even among the blacks, the different kind of social structures we had, this wasn't gluing together. Each one, you know, they were so different and really loving the Lord, really trying to serve the Lord. They, give, they gave everything, their life, their time, but nothing was working. Everything was upside down. It was very, very clear to me that there was this, the greatest problem the church had was me. I was tired of being alone. I was tired of, of carrying the burden of ministry and the pressure. And I was too afraid that if I talked to someone and shared the real issues of my heart, that I would be rejected. I felt lonely. I felt so very lonely. Our relationships were non-existent. And Mickey began to share with hope and gave my soul hope. This was the first time a man of God came to the church where I could feel there was a heart for us. They started to see uh, through the gospel what needed to happen to their own lives as I shared my life and what has happened to my life and the ministry and the church. There was something in the spirit that this man was bringing and transmitting which was more than a teaching. When Mickey began to share about the, the state of our hearts, it broke the walls of insecurity in my life, Richard, Basil, Neil, and the rest of the guys. It broke the racial barriers. It, it, it exposed us all. The gospel started to come to us. We realized that that was the answer. 
And, and what Mickey was sharing at that time, at every meeting, was the cross and the grace of God. And that was touching my heart every single day. I knew that the first thing that needed to, to go in my life was my ministry. And we put our hands, our lives, in submission and allowed God to do what He had in our hearts first to heal our relationships and then for God to rebuild the church on another platform. Perhaps for the first time in our lives we were honest with each other. We weren't hiding behind this, this ministry pretense. We weren't hiding behind our, our religious facade. My heart changed. That's why there was change. <laughs> we saw what God did in the lives and the hearts of, of these pastors and their wives and the family. We came back now as a team of elders with our titles. We came back as a team of men who were going to do everything together to, to support one another, to respect one another, and to submit to the counsel of the team. True relationships are there in the spirit where Christians, men of God, pastors, name whatever, we're giving our lives one to another. The unity we have today is real. It's tangible in our relationships with one another and it has a profound effect on the church and the people of God and wherever we go. Each one has taken his place and the church in Bulawayo today is strong. I can say it's very strong. We need the message of the cross back in the church. That is the foundational message that saved me from my prejudice, from my ministry which was on the wrong foundation, my marriage, and many other aspects which are changing in my life today. And for me, the gospel is the power to change a man's life. The mess in which we were as pastors and leaders of churches and what God has done in our lives and in the church, I can have no greater desire than to see the lives of other pastors and leaders go through the same experience. So that's my motivation to preach the gospel today. If the Lord could do what He's done in my life, Richard's life, Neil, Peter, Levi, whatever, whoever, it can happen to you as well. When I look at the Bulaway Christian Church today, I see a miracle. When I look at my life and the lives of these brothers around me, it's a miracle of healing and restoration. And that's what motivates us, to want to share and to spread the news of the Gospel of the Cross and what God has done in our hearts and our lives. So if in any way you can relate to where we were and where we are, please be free to contact us. We'd love to help you. May the Lord bless you.